Let's have a closer look at the new Koenigsegg Jesko today. Koenigsegg is a prime example for great engineering since they kept the same car concept since the mid-1990s and kept on improving every single bit of the car. The Jesko is the latest Koenigsegg creation and there are quite some updates to talk about. Let's start with the drivetrain. The engine has a flat plane crankshaft now, which is currently the lightest V8 crank in the production car with only 12.5 kg. Koenigsegg then also updated pistons and connecting rods. The rev limit for this 5 liter V8 is now 8500 rpm. And because there is no flywheel and no clutch, the responsiveness of the engine is from another world. So why is there no clutch? Because of the new Koenigsegg gearbox design, which they developed in-house, and which has smaller clutches within the gearbox instead of one large one on the crankshaft. A traditional gearbox has two or three shafts, a large clutch between engine and gearbox, and one pair of gears for each gear. So if I want a six-speed gearbox, I need six pairs of gears. Koenigsegg now designed their own nine-speed gearbox with only six gear pairings and one additional one for reverse. Because of their free shaft design, they can combine different gear pairings with each other to create a nine-speed gearbox. Three times three equals nine. If you are shifting, one clutch opens and the other one closes. Together with the great responsiveness and low inertia of the engine, super fast shifting times are possible. Disadvantage of this gearbox is the higher complexity, so it's a lot of development work to find the right setup for six clutches. The big advantage on the other side is that this is a super fast gearbox with nine gears that only weighs 90 kg and is much shorter than the previous 81 kg gearbox Koenigsegg used in the Agera. Because there is no real bell housing anymore, the whole gearbox sits between engine and differential. The previous Agera gearbox had the traditional mid-engine gearbox with the bell housing between engine and differential and the gearbox sitting behind the rear axle. This created the problem that the diffuser surface couldn't be raised in the center where it would create lots of downforce the inertia of the car is higher due to the gearbox at the very end and the exhaust had to somehow wrap around the gearbox, which also gave some unwanted heating. Also, the previous design always blew the exhaust gas downwards into the diffuser area, where you want upwash to create downforce. The new concept allows Koenigsegg to have a competitive diffuser, leaves a lot of space for the exhaust and avoids tight bends, which also reduces the pressure drop in the exhaust system. Furthermore, because of the new upper exhaust position, it allows Koenigsegg to have a lower carbon fiber rear structure, which improves safety, reduces weight, and lowers the mass moment of inertia. Another interesting area are the changes to the intake system. Koenigsegg uses a V8 twin turbo, so there is a turbocharger either side of the engine. That means that there is an air intake and hence an air filter either side. But they always combined both intakes to one center intake that was sitting low to give enough space for a rear window. Some versions also had a roof scoop. But the problem was always that the air arriving there already had quite some boundary layer. And also less energy because of the center viper. And this air couldn't always follow the increased curvature of the rear window into the air intake. So Koenigsegg solved this with a row of vortex generators on the roof. They energize the flow at the beginning of this increased curvature to avoid any separations and hence power drops at high speeds. But still Koenigsegg tried to improve this area. They wanted to give their customers better rear visibility and get rid of the complex air intake system. So now they have an air intake either side and a much bigger and lower rear window. At the same time, they don't need the vortex generators anymore because they don't need the extreme curvature anymore. The rear window does not have to reach the engine inlet anymore and simply just covers the back. Air intakes at this position are also possible because of Koenigsegg's great cabin design. The extremely curved windscreen avoids suction peaks, separations and large vortices like other cars. Because of that smooth design in this crucial area, Koenigsegg can send clean air to the back. At the front, the Jesko has a massive splitter to balance the large downforce gains at the back and the traditional large radiator in the center. 
For additional front downforce and better cooling, Koenigsegg installed an upper air outlet. The result is that the Jesko attack cannot store the roof in front. The car also features canards, adjustable front diffuser and much larger outlets at the front axle to improve front diffuser performance. Koenigsegg traditionally uses the large side inlets for their air-to-air -air intercoolers. For the first time, Koenigsegg smoothened the intake surface and got rid of the sharp edges. The intake area is very big now to provide enough cooling. But this position is still not ideal, because you get not much more than low energy wake from the front wheels here. McLaren and Ferrari solved this quite nicely from an aero point of view. Koenigsegg have enough power anyway, but this could be an area of future improvement. Nice to see is the much lower rear end of the car, which reduces the wake and brings more energy to the back and the large rear wing. Although the rear wing looks a bit like it was mounted the wrong way around, it's the result of international regulations, since it shouldn't stick out of the car's footprint. It's mounted from above to keep the underside clean and to reach maximum efficiency. But there are still some covers and screws at the lower side, which create disruptions. Koenigsegg also created another version of the Jesko, the Jesko Absolute. To reach a top speed of over 300 miles per hour, they created this low drag version of the Jesko. They removed the large rear wing, but kept two fins for high speed stability. To balance the downforce loss at the back, they reduced the size of the front splitter, removed the louvers on the front wheel arches, and got rid of the center outlet. This also means that the Jesko Absolute can store the roof in front. Additionally, they blanked the rear wims to keep the wake small and designed a more boxy rear bumper with clear separation edges to reduce drag. Let's have a quick look at some numbers. Koenigsegg said they set everything up for 310 miles per hour to be sure to reach 300. That's 496 km per hour. They claim a drag coefficient of 0.278 and a frontal area of 1.88 square meter. If we assume an air density of 1.2 kg per cubic meter, they would need 820 kW to overcome the aerodynamic drag. If we assume a weight of 1500 kg, including driver, and a friction coefficient of 0 0.01, they would need another 20 kW to overcome the rolling resistance. Together that's 840 kW. And if we assume a conservative gearbox efficiency of 96%, we would need 875 kilowatt or around 1200 horsepower to drive 310 miles per hour. So the claimed 1280 horsepower with normal fuel would be enough for that. In other words, this car is more than capable to drive these speeds. If the car is driven with E85, Koenigsegg claims a power output of 1600 horsepower. If we take a look back at the formulas, we can see that the Jesko Absolute would theoretically even be able to drive almost 550 km per hour, if they find a tire manufacturer for that. In summary, the new Koenigsegg Jesko is an impressive new generation of Koenigsegg cars with updates in almost every area. The sheer number of in-house developments and innovations are unlike any other car company. It's amazing to see these cars getting better and better with every generation. How do you like the new Koenigsegg Jesko? Let me know in the comments below.